Hey, what's up everyone, welcome back. This is gonna be the first video of the software series. So we're really gonna focus on Final Cut Pro X, which is the main software that I use to do all the editing. So I really wanna show you how to even first set up the software, especially set up the data management, which is really important. And then I'll follow up with more videos where I will outline all the functionalities of the software and then we'll start building up from there. So we're really gonna start from the ground floor and we'll work our way up. So let's get right into it. All right, so here we are. That's what it will look like once you started Final Cut Pro X. So what I wanted to really focus on in this video will be really to set your first project and really specifically the data management because if you don't select the right places to save your project, you will quickly find out that all the files that are created while you're working on a project will become extremely big real fast and will easily fill up your entire hard drive. So that's why my biggest advice would be that you should definitely start and work with external hard drive. That's what I've been doing and that's really been the best. Let's say that you want to get started and create a project so you would go to File New and you can go ahead and create a new library. By doing so, so first of all you'll get to decide where you save that. The library itself will not take that much space, so you can really save that actually uh, in your local files and you should be totally fine. So let's, let me call that one test YouTube, save that. So now you will see that you created your new library. Starting from there, so this is the, your library, this will be the project, that's the icon that will represent a project. So usually what I like to do is that I will actually create a library for each project. It really helps me to keep everything uh, organized in a better manner. So the thing that I wanted to point your attention is that once you select the library, you will see here on the right hand side the library properties and that's what is really important because you will see that they will actually tell you all those things about where the media is going to be, where the cache is going to be and the backups. So for example, the cache is really all the render files and this is going to get really big real fast. So for example, I have everything set to my external hard drive named Tristan. So I would highly advise you that here, clicking by modify settings, instead of having everything selected to in library, select an external hard drive so you'll be able to choose your destination pick something where you have a ton of storage uh, so you know get yourself a one terabyte hard drive external hard drive and put everything in there i mean if your computer has a ton of storage then you might not have to worry about this but i don't know i felt much better knowing that everything gets put on an external hard drive and not the internal hard drive so do that especially for cache and backup Motion content is pretty much all the all your titles and all your effect that can be left to where it is motion template folders and we'll, we'll talk to that in a later video. So once you've done that, you can click OK. And so as I mentioned, I would create a library every time that I do a separate project, and then usually and I will create a new event to organize my footage. So for example, let's say that I'm doing a a video and I want to organize my footage what I will do is I usually I will have one folder that will have my Sony footage and then I will create another event and this one so the event will be in the test YouTube library we don't have to create a new project yet and then for example this one I will call it drone and that's where all my drone footage will live uh, so once you do that then usually what I'll do, I'll even create a third one where I will keep all my... I will usually create a third one where I will actually keep the actual project. So I will call it main project, it's still going to be in the library, and then I can create a project. So usually, so you don't have to worry too much about those as far as you can change it. So Definitely pick the right codec. Usually ProRes 422 is kind of uh, the typical one. As far as the format, you can always go back and change that. And actually, if you're going to work with 4K footage, there's advantages to working maybe with a 720p or 1080p. 
resolution and then going back when you're done and moving back to 4K before you export. So right now I'm just going to leave it, leave it to 1080p and click create. So pretty much that's how I would organize my files. Here I will start pretty much um, importing my media. So same, what you really want to be careful when you import your media. So for example, so that's all my R drive here. Okay, here we go. Let's say I want to export some, uh, some drone footage. So let me pick this. One thing you really want to make sure is here on the right side, leave files in place. If you don't do this, it's going to copy all your files to your project folder, meaning that you're pretty much going to have twice the amount of space. So I always, I always organize my, my files beforehand and I leave them in place. Uh, so that prevents it from being copied somewhere else and taking much more space. So I'll just do this and then import selected. So that would be my footage and then I would go here. That's where I would have, for example, my mirrorless. Go pick those videos and that's it. You'd go back here, clicking on this was actual, would actually open your project. And then now if you really want to start adding items to your timeline, you would be able to go and pick them from the right folders. You can create as many as you need. If you have GoPro footage or if you want to, I don't know, organize them per days, you can create as many events as you want and so that you don't have just one big folder with everything. That's pretty much it for this video. This was really just to set a library make sure that your storage locations was, was set correctly and create your first project. So now you're pretty much set to start working on it, which we all will discuss in the next video. So that's it for today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was really just to outline you the main ways of setting up your software. I know especially the data management has been a problem for me when I first started using the software. I remember having all those files being created and filling up my hard drive in the matter of a few projects and it would just drive me crazy. So I really hope you guys get value out of it. In the next video, we'll really start digging into how to set up project timeline and start building a project. And then we'll just pretty much start building from there on. So I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.